A phone is a phone, right? What more can it do? Well, Samsung thinks it can do more. With the Z Fold 3, you not only get a phone experience, but when you unfold it, you get an immersive tablet experience. What exactly more can the Z Fold 3 do? Why don't we go check it out? The best way to experience your Z Fold 3 is simply browsing your app on your cover screen and then transforming that to an immersive tablet experience once you unfold your Z Fold 3. However, if you fold it back so you can go and continue browsing on your cover screen, you're not going to be able to do that. However, that's just a setting. If you go to settings, display, and at the bottom, if you go to continue apps on cover screen, this is where you can configure which apps you wanna continue using on the cover screen when you close your phone. That's pretty handy. So now I can go and enable this option for Reddit. Now, when I open Reddit on my cover screen, then unfold it, go to the larger screen, and then come back again to the cover screen, you can see the app still continues on my cover screen. So that way you can configure which apps you wanna have this behavior. Sometimes not every app you want to be able to use it on your cover screen. So it's great that Samsung is giving you that option to configure which apps you want to continue on your cover screen. Unlike in other phones, in Z Fold 3, you get two screens, the 6.2 inch cover screen and the 7.6 inch larger screen that you have once you unfold your Z Fold 3. However, if you notice that I have a different setup here in the larger screen and a different setup here in my cover screen. So with your Z Fold 3, you can configure apps and widgets for your cover screen, including the wallpaper, and you can do the same for your larger display when you unfold it as well. So you can keep that experience unique to each of those screens. However, let's say you do wanna keep the apps and widgets and the home screen in sync. Now Samsung has an option. You can configure that in the home screen settings. So tap and hold on the home screen to bring up the home screen options, then tap on settings and then tap on cover screen mirroring. When you turn it on, the apps, the home screen pages will be the same in the larger display when you unfold it. So I'm gonna turn it on and then tap apply. So now the screen mirroring is on. So what happens now is if you notice on my cover screen, I have three pages and two pages are populated with icons and a widget and the third page is empty. So when I open and go to the immersive tablet experience, you can see that it's almost using the first half of the screen as my first home screen page, the second half of the screen as my second home screen page, and that crease is your indication of that separation. And you can see that it has put the widget, it has put my weather and my news widget, and when I scroll, it still scrolls like you're scrolling your home screen page on your cover screen. This is good in case you wanna have the same experience coming through when you unfold it, but if you don't want that, you can turn off the screen mirroring. And if you notice, now if you tap and hold to configure the home settings, it will show you everything just as in the dimensions of the cover screen. So you no longer get that whole screen to configure, which is this whole display to configure. It does divide your screen into pages, so you, you can configure those pages here. Now, if you go back and turn off screen mirroring, this will retain all of your previous settings so you don't have to reconfigure them if you don't like that screen mirroring setup. So now if you go and look at the home configuration, you see that you get this whole screen to configure. So that those are some basic differences if you do decide to use screen mirroring. With such a big device, multitasking is a killer feature. Multitasking is all about working with different apps at the same time. So let's say I'm browsing Reddit and I also want to browse Twitter. Well, the usual case would be that I would just close this app and then open Twitter. 
but I don't have to do that anymore with such a large space. I can use it just like I would use in a normal tablet or a desktop. So Galaxy devices have something called edge panel, which will be indicated at the edge of your screen with a small bulge. Now this indicator would be in a different place in your phone, probably on the top right, but I have configured it to my bottom left. But if you swipe from that edge, you will get this new edge panel. With this edge panel, you can not only launch apps, but you can also launch the multitasking abilities of those apps. Let's say I want to open Reddit, and now I also want to browse Twitter. So I can swipe open my edge panel, I can tap and hold Twitter, so you can see it prompts me to drop on different places where I can open it as a multitasking view. And I can also open it as a pop-up view if I want to have it just as a separate app overlaid on top of Reddit. But let's say I want to open it up here on the left half of the display. And that's it, your app will be placed there. Now let's say you also want to browse YouTube. You can do that too. Swipe open the edge panel again, tap and hold on YouTube, and now you will get where you can actually drop this app. So you can either drop on the bottom half of the left display or the right display. So I'm gonna drop it here just below Twitter. And now you got three apps. Now let's say you still wanna go do more and you want to open up a browser in this case, right? So you can tap and hold again from your edge panel, but you can see you cannot open more than three apps together in this multitasking view. So you would have to either replace one of these apps or you can open it up as a pop-up view. So now you can keep browsing while you can also go look at Reddit, YouTube, and Twitter. And the good thing about this pop-up view is you can expand the size and make it easier for you to browse as well. And once you are done with this pop-up view, just tap on this blue divider, and then you will have options to close this pop-up view or expand this pop-up view. Now there's also a divider here that when you tap, you get few options. You can switch layouts, you can keep switching to find that out, and also you can create an app pair, meaning that now these three apps will open together and Samsung will pin that app pair to your edge panel for easy access. This is great, right? But every time I have to swipe open the edge panel to do the things. Well, you could save yourself some time. So when you swipe open the edge panel, at the bottom, tap on the more options menu, you'll get the option to pin this edge panel to your side. So now when I tap on the pin, now this becomes docked, just like your taskbar in your PC. This is really awesome. Now, I don't have to think about these apps that I usually open and work with. They are just right there in my fingertips. You can even see the app pair that we created is available right here. So if I wanna go back to that app pair with all of those three apps, I can just tap on here again and that will open up in my Galaxy Z Fold 3. So that's how you can use the edge panel and multitasking in your Z Fold 3 to get the most out of that immersive display you have. Now, if you want to configure the edge panel settings, you can go to the settings, you can go to display, and then swipe down to go to edge panel. This is where you can turn off the edge panel completely or tap on edge panels and then configure certain settings here. Notice that the configuring handle is right now disabled because your edge panel is pinned. Now, if you unpin it, you will notice the handle option comes back. So if you tap on handle, now you can adjust the position and you can also adjust what color the handle is. And with this button just right beside the handle, you can use that to position the handle at your comfortable location. And once you have configured the handle, you can go back and pin it again. This is a great productivity feature. It is going to transform the way you use your device. There is one more tip for multitasking. You can open multiple instances of an app. So for example, if I have my Samsung internet browser open here and I'm browsing through some website or something that here in this tab. Now, if I want to open another tab, I would actually just go to my tabs view and then create a new tab. 
but that doesn't give me the way to compare if I am looking at two different services or two different web pages that I'm browsing right now. But with Samsung Internet Browser, from your Edge panel, you can again open another instance of the Samsung Internet Browser. And now you got two instances of the same app running side by side. That is freaking awesome. You won't get this with, for instance, Chrome Browser. If you have your Chrome browser here that I'm browsing right now, and I want to open Chrome again, so I go to my Edge panel and try to open it side by side. Nope, no luck, I can't do that. There are two more apps that support that option. One is the Files app. So if you open a Files app and you wanna open another instance of the Files app side by side, you can do that. And same with Notes. If you have your Notes app open, the Samsung Notes app, and if you want to open another instance of the Samsung Notes app, you can do that as well. But I haven't seen any other third-party app supporting this other than these three Samsung apps. Z Fold 3 is a foldable, meaning you can fold it, you can unfold it. And you can use it as a stand because you can just leave it halfway through. And this is called the Samsung Flex Mode right so now you can have things running in your upper half of the display and some options coming up in the bottom half of the display of course right now i'm on my home screen so you don't have any options there to look at what the flex mode offers us let's take an example let us browse youtube now you can see when i'm not using the flex mode the YouTube is giving me a tablet experience, right? I have my video here and all of my recommended videos coming up on the side. Now, as soon as I put my fold into the flex mode, you can see it changed the view. It is using the upper half of the display as to play the video and the bottom half, it is giving me an uninterrupted view of all of the related videos that I can browse. So this is a great way to experience your Z Fold 3 when you put it down and you're watching a video in YouTube or any other player, you can actually now get a really good flex mode. However, this is not supported in all of the apps. If you look at Spotify, for example, it doesn't care whether your Z Fold is using the immersive experience or is using the flex mode. The experience is still the same. Well, wouldn't it be nice if actually we were able to have the Spotify player on the upper half of the display so you can do something else in the bottom, right? So Samsung has an option. It's not great, but enables a default flex mode for all of your apps. Go to settings, and then if you go to advanced features and then labs, you will see some really cool options here. But the option that we are looking at is the flex mode panel. This will allow you to have a flex mode panel at the bottom half of the screen by putting the app on the upper half of the screen. So if you scroll to the bottom and find Spotify, let's enable that. Now let's go back and look at the experience. So here I am in my Spotify. Now, as soon as I switch to flex mode, you can see the Spotify is now in my upper half of the display and I have the other options coming up here in the bottom. Now some options I get in the bottom is it understands that this is a media app so it allows me to play the song, skip back and forward. I also get an option to quickly view my notifications. I can take a screenshot, I can adjust the brightness and I can adjust the volume from this flex panel. So. It's not that great, it's not going to help you do a lot, but at least when you put your phone down for a hands-free experience, you can use this flex panel to your advantage. And especially when you are playing a song or watching a movie in which an app doesn't support the flex mode, this option becomes a really useful one. Okay, let's talk about apps. Now, some apps are really good. If you look at Reddit, for example, it understands that it has a large space to work with, so it expands the app and gives you a tablet experience. But apps like Instagram, they don't support this view. You can see that I'm just getting a plain old phone view, which probably is not the best experience for me to use in my Z Fold 3. Thanks to Samsung, you can adjust this setting as well. If you go to your settings, if you go to advanced features, and then if you go to labs and tap on customize app aspect ratios, 
I know the name sounds really bad, but what it does is it allows you to make your app full screen and fit to this big immersive display. So if you go down to Instagram, you will see that it is using apps default, which is an aspect ratio of 16 is to nine. Now, if you tap on Instagram, you get an option to switch to four is to three, which is really bad, don't do that. But you can tap on full screen to get that full screen experience. So now if I go back to Instagram, you can see that it's using that full immersive experience to drive the Instagram apps experience. So this way you can bring in those apps that don't support this full immersive experience to support that, which is great. Now, how good this is with Instagram? Do things fail? I'm not sure. You would have to use it to find out. But so far with Instagram, I haven't had any issues. There could be some apps that have issues, but Instagram is not one of them. Like with any Android device. You can always connect your Galaxy Z Fold 3 with an external keyboard and an external mouse and start using the mouse and keyboard to operate your device. Now this could be very useful because you already have a large screen to work with. But what if you want even a larger screen? Well, with the Samsung DeX, you can connect your device to your external monitor to get a PC-like experience. What I have here is a USB-C hub attached to my Galaxy Z Fold 3 and I'm going to then connect using the HDMI port to the external monitor. Now as soon as I connect this, Samsung DeX starts. So you can see here that Samsung DeX is now telling me that it's now started the experience. So now I get a desktop-like experience here where I can just open my apps the same Android apps I have in my Galaxy Z Fold 3 and start using them just like I would normally use. So here's my internet browser. I can go to the next tab and I can keep opening tabs and I can just get the desktop experience I would get. Now, I also get the multi-window experience, right? So if I want to open another internet browser instance, I can do that here and that allows me to open now multiple windows so that I can have them side by side, just I would do so in my desktop app. And this whole experience feels natural, just like you're using a Chromebook or a PC, right? So you got your taskbar, you got your controls to uh, change your volume input, even take a screenshot and also have the wireless connection and open up the quick settings if you want to get to access the edit panel, for example. So overall, this DeX experience that is connecting your Z Fold 3 to an external monitor is available to many Samsung devices, but it just makes more compelling with the power you got in Z Fold 3 to make this experience even better. And now I can do a lot of things really quickly by connecting my Z Fold 3 to the monitor. And the selling point of Galaxy Z Fold 3 is as simple as it gets. You want it to behave like a phone, the Galaxy Z Fold 3 is a phone. You want it as a tablet, you have it. And now you can just connect it to an external monitor and get the PC-like experience. So now your phone is also a PC. Here's a useful setting. Your Z Fold 3 might be your first foldable device and you might just be getting used to it. So here's an option that has saved me a ton of time initially when I got my Z Fold 2 back last year. The default experience when you fold your device, it assumes that you're done with your device and it locks the device so you can put it in your pocket and keep going. However, when you're working from home, that's not the case all the time. You can control that option. Go to settings and then go to lock screen and then tap on secure lock settings. Here you will find some interesting options. And the one that we are looking for is lock when folded. So if you turn this on, now every time when you fold your device, it will get locked. And when you unfold it, you still have to unlock it. If you don't want to have that experience, you can turn it off. So now when you fold your device, and then if you just double tap to turn on the display, the device is not locked. Okay, next one we're gonna look at is keyboard settings. With such a large screen, you get few modes to use in your Samsung keyboard. Now, of course, this only works with your Samsung keyboards. So if you're using Gboard or any other third-party keyboard, 
this option may not work for you. With the Samsung keyboard, the default mode you get is this split view. So it's much easier for you to type. However, if you don't want this and you want to get the full view, tap on this keyboard mode button right here in the keyboard toolbar. If you tap, you can toggle between different modes. So here's the full mode. And if you tap again, you can toggle back to the split view mode. Now, however, if you want to detach this keyboard and have it as a pop-up view, you can tap on this button that will now pop up the keyboard. So now you can tap and hold the keyboard and move it to any part of the screen that is comfortable for you to type. Now at any point you want to exit this mode, tap the same button in the keyboard toolbar and that will dock the keyboard to your display. Now make sure you also tap on the settings button to get into the settings for the keyboard and look at some of the options available here. The two options I would ask you to look at is the size and transparency that allows you to adjust the size of the keyboard, how tall, how short you want it. So depending on your experience with this larger screen, you can configure that. Also, you can adjust the width of the split mode, which also comes in handy if you feel like this is just too long of a way for you to type in split mode. Now, you can also configure the default keyboard mode in various different settings. So here you can see, you can configure the keyboard mode for the main screen, in which case I've set it up to split. You can set it up to standard so that you can always open and use the keyboard in standard mode. And you can also do the same for cover screen that lets you configure it for the portrait view and the landscape view. So there are a lot of settings with the Samsung keyboard. If you click on my video, just stop right now, you would get to know the best tips and tricks available for the Samsung keyboard. And it's really awesome keyboard for your Samsung device. This is my default whenever I use any Samsung device. And with Z Fold 3, I never go back to any other keyboard because the options I get with the default keyboard, that is the Samsung keyboard, are awesome. Let's talk a little bit about the camera options we get here because there are some tips that you can use to make the experience with your camera even better. When you're in the camera view, you can switch to flex mode view to get a view where you have your viewfinder on the upper half of the display and the camera controls here on the bottom half of the display. So now you can just lay your phone right there and have a steady shot like using in a tripod. Now you can press this button on the top left to switch the viewfinder mode if that makes it easier for you to have it in the bottom along with the control over here. What it does is that pushes the shots that you take with your phone, the place where you see all of your shots that you take with your phone to the upper half. So now if I tap on my shutter button, that's gonna take a snap and then that will come up here as a preview. So I can tap on it immediately and get a preview or I can go back to taking more photos. So with flex mode, I get a lot of flexibility to use it as a stand and take the photos. Now, if I want to use the selfie camera on my cover screen, obviously I have the selfie camera here to use it. However, this is just 10 megapixel. I don't have the telephoto lens and all the goodness I get with my rear camera. But what I can do now is I can tap on this selfie button I have on the top right. Now it will allow me to use the rear camera as my selfie camera, which you can see here. So this is much better. So I can hold my phone right here or I can turn it to landscape view. I can use different lenses. That will allow me to take a much better picture using the rear cameras here than this 10 megapixel selfie camera. And of course, don't forget about the hands-free option. So for example, if I show my palm, it will automatically take a picture. Or if I say keyword, smile, cheese. Isn't that awesome? You can configure these options in your camera settings. Just tap the settings button in your camera and then scroll down to find the shooting method. So tap on shooting methods. Here you will find the option to turn on the voice commands and also the command to show palm. These are very useful and gives you a hands-free experience to use your camera in your Z Fold 3. Samsung has provided some really good options to optimize the battery in your Z Fold 3. If you go to your settings, and then tap on battery and device care, and then tap on battery, you'll find some really good options here. So if you scroll down, go to the more battery settings, and here you'll find the option to turn on the adaptive battery, 
and also an option to protect your battery that extends your lifespan of your battery by limiting the maximum charge to 85%. Now, this might be useful when you're working from home so that you don't have to worry about the device getting charged all the time. And then once you turn this option on, Samsung optimizes the battery to have a great lifespan. So it's very useful if you're keeping your device for the next two to three years, which might be the case for many people that buy the Z Fold. Now you can also turn on enhanced processing if you want to have faster data processing for example, if you're using Adobe Photoshop or Lightroom, you can turn this on so you can actually get more performance out of your battery, but I wouldn't have this turned on all the time. Now, if you go back to the main settings, the battery and device care, you can optimize now so it actually clears up all of the apps and the background services that are running for quite a long time and optimizes your phone for better battery and performance. But if you want to do this automatically, tap on more options and tap on automation. There you can configure to optimize daily. So you can choose a time. In this case, I've chosen 3 a.m. And I can also choose to close apps to free up memory. So that way I can have a good experience when I wake up and use my phone, right? Or I can also choose to auto restart at set times, meaning that if I need to restart at a specific time to clean up the apps, I could use that option as well. But a really cool option is the adaptive power saving. So when I turn this on, all of the apps, all of the other things that are running in the background would be optimized and Samsung will take care of saving your battery and performance by automatically closing those apps if they they're not used for a long time. Now I turn it on so that it gives me a better battery life, but it depends on what experience you want because sometimes what happens, the background apps gets closed. So when you go back and open the app, you can see here Notion already reloads the app rather than loading the screen where I left before leaving the app. So those are some of the disadvantages of selecting the adaptive power saving mode, but it's really good option if you wanna save your battery. Z Fold 3 comes with the option to charge other devices through the reverse wireless charging feature, which Samsung calls wireless power share. So you can always charge other devices through the USB-C cable, right? But with the battery in your Z Fold 3, you can wirelessly charge other devices like this smartwatch for example now to enable the setting you have to go to settings battery and device care tap on battery and then you'll have your wireless power sharing and here you can turn it on and also set a limit for your z folds battery so that you can preserve it you can say when your z fold battery is 30 percent stop charging the other device right you can change that to maybe even 45 percent so that you have more power for your Z Fold 3 and not just give all the power to the other device. Now you can turn it on here, but the easiest way and the shortcut to turn it on is through the quick panel layout. So if you go to your quick panel layout and browse through the available options, you will see that you don't have the wireless power share available here, but it's a simple step to add it. Just tap on more options and edit buttons. And here you will find that you have the wireless power share available. So drag it and then put it over onto the quick panel layout. And now you got your wireless power share here. So now once it's enabled, you can place the other items that you want to charge. In this case, your Galaxy watch at the back of your device and that will charge the device that you just placed. With all of these experience packed into Z Fold 3, it really makes you wonder how much can you do with the phone? And it's great, Samsung is pushing this through with so much innovative features and innovative hardware packed into this one single device. Let me know in the comments what your favorite Z Fold 3 feature is. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more tips and tricks, Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Until next time, bye.